I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Don't forget to head on over to our website, shamelesssex.com, for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. And welcome to the weird new format of Shameless Sex Podcast because April's not here. She's in her house. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're actually quarantining and practicing social distancing, as I hope all of you out there are as well. We had a hard conversation this morning about this. Uh, we're both pretty stressed out and anxious about all everything that's going on. We live in California, so maybe it's not as rough for some of you who do not live in California. And we usually you know, meet up to do all of our intros and all of our podcasts. And we have decided to abide by the social distancing and the shelter in place uh, recommendations slash orders that um, as being re- as responsible citizens, uh, we decided that we really need to do our best to not contribute to the spread of this thing. So uh, April and I are both now just hanging out and drinking wine, drinking tequila with each other virtually. We just actually had a little sip of tequila together. <laughs> I know I'm about to do another one. It's, it's hard too, because it's springtime and everybody wants to go outside and congregate. And I know that in some parts of the country, they don't get a lot of warm weather all year round. And we're fortunate enough to have many months of warmth. So we can look outside and know that we'll get more warm days. But I know if you're in New York or which is also being widely affected by this uh, or Chicago, it's springtime and the weather's getting warmer. So I know you want to go outside and play. Just remember six feet right now, y'all six feet. Yeah. Yeah. I, the one thing we were talking about this this morning as well. So I, I, there's this theory, not theory, it's called the harm reduction approach that we use in the human sexuality realm, specifically towards STDs, STIs. And um, it states that instead of saying they're safe and unsafe, that you actually um, are looking at things along the spectrum or maybe more on a continuum, actually, that there's all these middle ground options there. And I think what a lot of people are faced with is that there's either safe or unsafe here. It's either like complete quarantine, which we might have to do at some point, but we're not there yet. Um, right now, it's kind of like people have more power in their hands uh, to make decisions for themselves. And some people I know are doing complete quarantine. I know some people haven't seen anyone for over a week now in California and that live here in yeah. Santa Cruz. Um, and I have well, fr- some friends that are that are in Texas that are like, we normally don't see anyone, so there's no there's yeah, no what's difference new? here. Yeah, what's new? Nothing has changed. What's new? Yeah. So, we're, but more along the lines of like, um, every person that we see. Uh, just increases the the risk for everyone, not just myself, not just for the other person, but also globally. Um, and so uh, as little people as we can see, we can decrease the risk. And there's some people and that we need to see. Six feet is 1.5 meters in case you aren't on the imperial system. Oh, yeah. It is 1.5 meters. Yep. And so sh- yeah. So shameless sex is not stopping, but uh, we might not, April and I might not be able to see each other in person for a while, which is really sad. I miss you already, Chip, but it's nice that I can see you this way. Hopefully the internet stays with us through all this craziness. I know if the internet, if the internet goes, then I guess we'd have phone conversations. We'd have to figure out how that would look. Oh my God. A landline? We got to get a landline? No, I'm assuming the cell phone towers will still be active, just not the internet. I go, I guess. I if guess someone shot different. down a satellite or something, maybe that would be a problem. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. It's all falling apart. I'm just going to send you an SOS and then start you know, shooting like bows and arrows in the sky with smoke. I feel like if the internet went down, I'd be like, look, uh, let's do a map. We'll be in masks six feet apart from each other, wherever we are outside. And we could just record that way because our cords are long enough. Maybe we could get some like headphone masks, like full masks. Also, we can speak into and it records things for us. Next yeah. innovation. So it's funny. I I like how the the grocery stores are putting, they're putting little dots on the floor so you know how far six feet six feet away is from another person. That oh, they are. I haven't even seen that. 
Yeah, at the local grocery store near my house, uh, they have little dots that says "stay in your dot," and that you're that way you're abiding by the six feet social distancing rule. Oh, all right. I haven't seen that yet, but yeah, that's that's helpful because some of them you're you're like still one foot away from someone, and it looks a little questionable. I know, I know. I hope this doesn't create a huge divide though with people thinking. That they have, I don't know. I have allergies right now. I take my temperature twice a day. So I do sneeze because there's, it's springtime. The acacia is going off in Santa Cruz and I always get allergies this time of year and itchy throat. So I am like doing like a little throat clearing and, and sneezing. And everyone's and like, people, ah! I'm afraid I'm going to get stoned if I go outside when I have to go to the grocery store, or when I have to go get supplies somewhere, which I'm trying to order online, but everything's so slow right now. Yeah, it's a challenging time right now, and I think in some places like Amazon, or um, which I guess I appreciate, where they're they're shipping things less, and then there's the whole conversations around even the workers that are packaging things and bringing your package to your house and being careful about that. It's just like cautious about everything all the time. Wash your hands every twenty minutes, y'all. This is why I'm grateful to have a little animal, by the way. If I think I said this in past podcasts, but like now's the time to get a little furry animal because those creatures, no one said we need to watch out for them. Unless they go up to all the strangers and get all the pets, then you have to be careful, which my animal might do. Um, okay, so we this joy that we are going to step into some joy in this podcast. We and just so you all know, you might hear some future podcasts that we already recorded before this thing really blew up. So it might sound a little irreverent, like we're like, oh, life is wonderful um, during the recordings because we recorded a ton of podcasts in February that have yet to be released. Uh, maybe that will be refreshing for you to actually hear some perspectives where we're not tainted by the sadness or the fear that is going on um, that is so real. And, and so this podcast is with Caroline Carrington, who is a colleague and friend of mine as well. Um, and she is a uh, tantra extraordinaire. I'll read her bio in a little bit, or actually April will, because she's better at reading these things. <laughs> she has a wonderful voice to listen to and a really unique accent. So it's yeah. a soothing, sexy, sensual voice. And tantra you know, like as well, a lot of folks think of, she, she des- describes some like real life applicable tools and ways that you can bring it into your world. It's not just for like the wooey hippie dippy folks. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you can bring into your everyday life. It isn't just like you know, for certain people. I think everyone can take something from this. And if not, she just sounds fucking sexy, sexy. But first... I'm going to read some feedback. Feedback. <laughs> we got some feedback, an email from someone. Um, his name starts with a V. It is not the nicest email, um, but we like to read a lot of our feedback, whether it's good or bad, positive, negative. I have some opinions about this, and I will also preface this with I'm already in a shitty mood. <laughs> I actually don't love reading negative feedback. It it kind of ruins me for a few hours. You don't mind it as much. I, oh. I always kind of like wah wah and I should have seen me when this I was reading this my partner was here and I was like fuck this like (laughs) um, some of the things this person says like you fucking kidding me really you fucking kidding me and I also so I'm I have to say yes I was angry then (laughs) reading this Uh, I drank some tequila (laughs) now I'm actually feeling good because of the tequila thank you but I'm also uh definitely PMSing slash and I'm not I don't need to excuse my female experience by the way that's not what I'm trying to do right here I'm not like the hysterical woman and I am aware that I have other stuff going on that might make this more loaded hence like you know, there's, there's a, there's a fear thing going on me about this virus. So, um, that there might be undertones of that, but I will read this to you and, uh, bear with me if I sound angry because I am ha guys, you really should know your audience better before you have invited feminists. Oh yeah. Is it Cara? <laughs> Kara, Kara, no, Kara, Kara, it's Kara, Kara Lewenthal in, uh, into the show. Your podcast was my favorite and I will not recommend you anymore. First, claiming that we are living in a world ruled by men, aka the patriarchy is not true because if it was true, men would not get longer jail time for the same crime to compare to women. Man would not do 95% dangerous jobs, and we would definitely not celebrate so many celebrations about women. Mother's Day, for example. Our society would look like Saudi Arabia, where women are second-class citizens, and the pay cap is also a stupid lie. I could not listen to those lies anymore and removed your podcast. 
end. <laughs> the <laughs> end. <laughs> that was a very anticlimactic end. <laughs> the I end. I have removed your podcast. Part of me is like, part of me is like bummed because I'm like, oh, you actually probably needed our podcast. I think our podcast could help to, you know, maybe expand, broaden your horizon a little bit. Another part of me is like, good riddance to you. (laughs) Carry on. Please carry on. Um, Mother's Day? Fuck you. Sorry. (laughs) Like, I don't understand that because there's also Father's Day and we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of days celebrating all people and the earth. And I think, but I really, like know. your way of saying that we are all that we're equal and this isn't things is because you said we're celebrating the day of like, thank you for giving birth to all the humans on the planet. And that's like, really, that that is some hard fucking work that like people still aren't. Uh, I'm, a lot of mothers still aren't recognized for as, as, as like a hard job, by the way. Um, and we I think we said you weren't on this podcast with me that I re- when I record this with Kara Kara. Um, I think in this, I did ask her state this, and I'm careful about this now that when we talk about the patriarchy, we're not saying that we hate men or that it's completely ruled by men or men aren't doing anything to support women at all. We're saying that we live in a system that is really old and we're talking about a structure. And again, you know, people choose to hear certain things out of this. And and yes, there's times when we don't say things perfectly. And so I'm not 100% sure, but there's so many things that were stated in here that, that to me state, wow, you are still very much influenced by the patriarchy to, to have all these claims. This is actually a good time for me to bring up something that I've been, that's been in my mind for quite some time is rewriting our constitution that was written so many years ago by a bunch of white dudes and we live and breathe by this constitution and it's just is so outdated for the amount of people the amount of equality now that's that is uh more abundant in in in, in existence in the u.s especially and i think on some level now who's going to rewrite the constitution i don't know but perhaps a a specific group of people that is taken from the demographics of what actually exists in the u.s at least today of uh, an accurate representation an accurate yeah an accurate representation of people of all different um they came from all different backgrounds and maybe they have have different monetary income and perhaps they are not just uh rich white men that are in holding public office or were about to God, I would love to get to that day. And we, we, we <laughs> the people in coming from a modern day approach, maybe this is, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll get there at some point. But yeah, to this listener uh, who's not listening anymore, we wanted to share this. And usually we're like, oh yeah, I see your perspective. And um, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> with that one. I mean, that one and Rumpel Foreskin are pretty much my two least favorite feedback oh, that we've received. But, but the name Rumpel Foreskin was pretty epic. Yeah, so. they went with that one, but that was about it. Uh, so oh, anyway, let, let's get on to a happier matter. Yeah! Which is our sex question, which is sort of light and fluffy and and good. So this is, thank you, listener, an anonymous listener. What couple's sex toys do you recommend for husband and wife to use? Trying to expand the others. My wife loves to use clitoral stimulating toys. But how would I try and introduce something like a G-spot vibrator to her? Ooh, Ooh. I like where your head's at. Yeah. Especially during these I, times right now. Get more pleasure, more orgasms, please. You know what you could do is I would suggest like the Miss B. It looks like Miss Buy, but they say Miss B by Fun Factory, which is a it, purepleasureshop.com has that toy and a, and a bunch of other amazing toys. But that has a G-spot stimulator along with a clitoral stimulator. Oh, yeah. It's dual. And it's, it's yes, dual. It's, it's Miss M-I-S-S, a separate word, B-I. That's a great one. And they, it's by Fun Factory. They make some of our favorite sex toys. I love that one. It's my I mom's favorite toys. vibrator. Hey, mom. See, there you go. And because it is, it's an awesome vibrator. I had a threesome with that back in the day. You did? Yeah. Did someone use it on you? Or did you use it on someone? Uh, someone used it on me. During I had given threesome? it to them. I had given it to them. It was a couple. If the couple used it on you. know who you're talking about. Yeah, this was when I was freshly single. You were wild. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so everyone order the Miss B and think of April in a threesome. She can be your unicorn in your fantasy. Um, you know, it's it's a really awesome toy. Yeah, that's cur- great curve for the G-spot and the dual stimulation. And then other couples toys, I mean, like April's talking about the, the G-spot toy, other couples toys. We love the Wee Vibe. We talk about the Wee Vibe all the time on our podcast uh, or often, not all the time. That's an overstatement, um, but it is a kind of a C-curve toy and has a part that goes in and clips on on, on the G-spot, another part that clips out on 
the clitoris and it could be a hands-free device that vibrates for both parties during sex. Um, so we're a huge fan of that one as well. And intro- how to introduce G-Spot Vibrator. Um, I'm not sure if you're saying like how to have the conversation or what's the best first time G-Spot Vibrator. G-Spot Vibrators have a curve. They're curved up because the G-Spot G area is up under the pubic bone. Um, it's only about like, you know, half a finger's length in up towards the belly button. And so you want your G-Spot toy to have a curve. Uh, if you go to a site like Pure Pleasure, I believe it's pretty easy to navigate to figure out exactly what those toys are. To, and there's so many of them. You have a category on there? I'm trying to remember as I say that, because we, we just rebuilt the website a while ago. Um, I do know that you all get 15% off with coupon code Shameless Sex. And when I go to sex toys and we have, yep, there's G-Spot Vibrators. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. You go to G-Spot Vibrators and you can find, I spent so much time helping with this website, so I should know that, but well, now I really. Ooh, I love looking at hot octopus toys just on that landing page. Oh, go, oh. home page, girl. We don't make a G-Spot product yet, but we are working on a really amazing one. And uh, I'm trying to think of another G-Spot toy that I know is really effective. They don't make the delight anymore at Fun Factory. No, I mean, we used to like, so the thing about the G-spot, what's interesting is like the G-spot doesn't even, itself doesn't even really get off to the vibrations. You feel the vibrations more in the first inch of the vaginal opening around the labia, the clitoris, et cetera. So when you sit in the G-spot with the vibrator, it's more so like the come hither motion, the pressure that you're using with it. And then the vibrations will feel nice on the vaginal opening. And so ultimately you could get kind of any G-spot vibrator based on the shape that you like. And then if someone likes stronger stuff, then you get like a stronger vibration or the lighter stuff. We always like the Lalo GG for a lighter one, but I don't know. I'm a fun factory girl. You have, you have some reasonable prices on here too. I'm just looking at it while we're, while we're here. We're shopping because we're on the internet now. (laughs) I know we're on the internet. So now we're fucking weird. Fucking weird. (laughs) Oh, the (laughs) electro Facebook all of a sudden she's gone. She's having a Facebook. I know. Amy's like, chip, chip. Hello. Hello. We're, Hello. we're talking here. We're, we're, yeah. we're recording. Sorry about that. I'll Come focus. on back. <laughs> uh, yes. But hopefully that helps um, with a couple of different toys to try. And, um, and then anything small, I mean, couples toys that are great, anything small, like the, um, the digit, I think the hot octopus digit is a good couples toy. It's a finger vibrator. That's really great for any. Oh, that's toy. a great recommendation. It's so discreet and it fits like, even uh, if you have thicker fingers or girthier fingers, yeah. it clips on. So it doesn't even slide on like a ring. It can but if you have bigger fingers, it can just clip on. So it makes a perfect couples toy, especially for uh, duos that are looking for something smaller and discreet. It's really nice. And it looks badass when you're on. What was the tagline? Like give something the finger? What is it? The finger? Oh, give bad sex the finger. Oh yeah. Fuck you, bad sex. Yeah. Fuck you. My sex Mo- is going to be great. Mother's Day, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm in a mood. Sometimes. Yeah, you are. It's like, see, this is another conversation I was having about our, about our podcast that I just want to comment on. We are not really a mainstream podcast because we think outside the box and our whole platform is to inspire people to think outside the box. And therefore we get critiqued a lot based on our language and a lot of things that we say and do, whereas mainstream people like, what is that podcast that, um, the two call her daddy? podcast oh call her daddy yeah which i mean they're politically incorrect half the time and but a lot of people are not criticizing them because their listeners are very used to that i think maybe i'm not sure well we also aren't owned by any we're our own thing so we have create free creative control and so when you're owned by a network or you have these really these these advertisers that are spending a lot of money with you and they can control a lot of what you say and do and I hope that we always can maintain creative control over our, over our process and over what we do because it is, it's what we care about and what we love. And we also try to take a, an approach that isn't just one-sided and one way. And we do, th- this is why we do read feedback that is negative because even though it's putting it out there, we feel that our listeners can handle it and also be supportive in ways when they write back and say, fuck that guy too. Or yeah. we don't feel like that's true. We get a lot of people that tell us that they fast forward for the first 15 minutes because it feels like they're wasting their time. Hence why in the show notes, I say when the interview starts, we, it's always yeah. written in there. So anyone who gives negative feedback about that these days, like you didn't read the show notes, it's in there. You can find out when you can fast forward. So that's all. Yeah. Well. And then I have people that say how much they love the first 15 minutes because they get to 
hear you and I banter and hear interesting sex questions. So to each their own. And this is why humans are great. We are entitled to our own opinions and to share those free speech, part of the constitution. Part of the constitution that we are currently rewriting. (laughs) We are in the process of rewriting it on a board of very diverse individuals. Um, Okay. So that brings me to, before we read the bio, I would like to talk about one of our sponsors. So this podcast we do have sponsors. We are very particular about who we work with. Uh, and during this time right now, what's going on? There are some sponsors that really apply. Uh, one of them is Dipsy and it is an online app that you can use from home because we all know we have a lot of time at home and we already had a ton of listeners that are looking for ways to spice up their sex life, um, to you know recreate their sex drive and to tap into their bodies. That was already something that was hard for a lot of folks. Um, especially maybe clitoris owning folks and Dipsy, we were recommending that then, but now it's probably even more so like, holy fuck, I'm really disconnected. Um, so Dipsy is an online app that we absolutely love. April, I know that you listen to it regularly, don't you? I listen, well, now's the time I have more free time than I'm used to. And I listen to the guided sessions because they really help me unlock confidence and they just kind of add this heightened experience with my partner and I that we normally just when we listen to music, we don't get the same sort of sexy feelings. I listened to a story, I think it was two nights ago. It was about a spontaneous hookup with a hot stranger. And Ooh. I seriously thought about it for the rest of the day and it turned me on so much. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So now more than ever, I think it's the perfect time for you, our listeners, to try Dipsy. And Shameless Sex listeners are getting three, 30 days, not three, 30 days free when you go to dipsystories.com slash shameless. That's 30 days totally free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash shameless. Again, I'll say it one more time, dipsystories.com slash shameless. Go check it out. Go check it out. Get turned on. Feel some aliveness in your body. Maybe that's what I'll do right after this podcast. Because, Or maybe I'll just go masturbate. I need one of the two. There's something that's going on in this isolation. You need um, to calm down. Yeah. Ah, you're like, go, go let it out. I'm a hysterical <laughs> woman. Um, and I'm owning it. So, uh, and then also on that note, during these times, here's another thing. Connection. That's a hard one for a lot of folks. Now we have the internet, uh, which is available, which is wonderful. And all those people that were only using the internet to connect now, we're like, you guys are genius. Um, and this is why... We are huge fans of one of our sponsors, My Girl Fund. We already were before because I did our, we did our research. But now when uh, finding time for intimacy and connection is especially hard, especially for single folks, we're super happy to recommend My Girl Fund to our listeners. Um, and April will tell you a little more about what it is. So we've talked about My Girl Fund before. Basically what it is, it's virtual relationships with people that are sexy, amazing, whenever you want. So on your own time, that means you can message with them, connect, you can share photos and videos, and it's from the privacy of your own home, your own device. So why we love it, and as Amy mentioned, it actually empowers the women who work there. So you're supporting something that is that is good for everyone. And they connect with who they want to, and they control how they interact. So it's totally safe, it's discreet, and And it's pretty much fun for everyone, especially in these times where we're alone a lot. And it's free to join mygirlfund.com. And for a limited time, you can become a lifetime premium member for less than $5 when you visit mygirlfund.com slash shameless. That means you get discounted credits and bonus interaction features for life when you go to mygirlfund.com slash shameless. Go check it out. And now... Let's read the bio. But April, you're reading it because you're really good at reading things. I thank you, Amy. I think that is a biased opinion. Maybe some people out there is like, she's terrible too. She's great. Uh, But I do enjoy it. So for that matter, let's talk about Caroline Carrington, who I absolutely adore. Shout out. I know you're listening, Caroline. So Caroline Carrington is a certified neo-tantra educator and pleasure and intimacy expert inspiring people who live empowered lives across the U.S. and around the world. She is the founder of Sarasa Tantra and carries the dream of this lineage to expand people's experience of pleasure, intimacy, and connection through relationships, energy play, and dynamic and erotic meditation. Caroline is available for private sessions, workshops, deep dive retreats, and is committed to training teachers and mentoring neo-tantric practitioners with high levels of integrity. 
So to learn more, go to jewelinthelotuscoaching.com. I'll spell it for you. J-E-W-E-L-I-N-T-H-E-L-O-T-U-S coaching.com. And you can also go to sarasatantra.com. That's S-A-R-A-S-A-T-A-N-T-R-A.com. And now let's get to the show. All right, everyone, episode time. This one is extra special as every episode we do, but this one is in person. A, we love in person. We're having our in-person threesome with April and Caroline Carrington. And I also know Caroline from the Tantra world. We actually, um, you've taught at Pure Pleasure, which we recently sold the retail store, but right. you used to teach there at the store. And then um, you, and then you and I also were in uh, Barbara Corellis' Urban Tantra training, which was awesome. Um, and so, and I, we've done episodes Episodes on you. You call it. You say. We say. Say. Tantra, you say neo. I say neo tantra. Tantra. Yeah. And people like tantra. 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 Well, yeah. You have one of the best, I think, voices for recording you ever. Have, yeah. You have a beautiful, Thank really you. nice yeah. to listen to. Yeah. You have a podcast. Voice. Your voice like makes love. to yeah. the Radio waves. But it, yeah, it's good. It'll be good to have a, a new perspective. And when I think of actually, when I think of tantra. I think of you because you're so you're like someone that I've just seen is so you live it and um, and then you also teach it and you work with people one on one and um, et cetera. So I'm so happy that you're here and would love to just open with if you can tell our listeners we all, always love hearing the story of how you got to be where you are today mm. and maybe tell them where your accents from and you know how <laughs> to get conglomeration to be, yeah. of all of the things uh-huh. I love it. Well, let's break them in easy and start with the accent. Yeah. I do have my super sexy voice on today yes. after a great date last night and some screaming orgasms. So yeah. an extra special treat for the listeners. That's a good way to lose your voice a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, that's why we're drinking tea. Yeah. Not wine. Yes. yes. Beautiful rose tea I this know. morning to, to lubricate yes. the voice. Ooh. Um, yeah, so most people ask about the accent, and I'm sure your listeners will be curious. I grew up in Cape Town in South Africa, and I was there till after college, and then went to London for five years, which was an amazing place to discover who I was, and um, worked in the corporate world. Uh, yeah, I worked on at Merrill Lynch on the largest trading floor in Europe. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I didn't know that part. Can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Were you like, give me five stocks of that? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Well, I got a little disillusioned. You know, that's like Uber corporate. So I went traveling for three years and lived in Australia and New Zealand. And I've been in the Bay Area um, in Oakland for the last 15 years. Oh, so wow. my accent is quite an, an amalgamation. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've tried not to get an American accent, but I've learned I have to roll my R's here. Mm-hmm. I say water instead of water. <laughs> People look at me like I like I'm weird. water. <laughs> it sounds so much nicer. Are they like Walter? <laughs> Walter. Yeah. But wa- yeah. water, yeah. yeah. Water sounds mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Tantra. 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 Yeah, so getting to that piece, um, it's really interesting because I, I love that we met at, at Barbara Corellis' training, yeah. but a lot has evolved since then. And you, you asked me how I first got into it, and, and the short answer is through really good sex. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I met somebody who was into uh, something called energetic sex, which mm-hmm. is related, but not uh, strictly speaking, neo tantra. And it took, I was already pretty sex positive. I was into kink and was already polyamorous. And anyway, so very sex positive, but it took everything I knew about sex and turned it on, turned it on its head. And I was like, I have to learn more. Mm-hmm. So a month after meeting uh, that person, I met somebody that I was in relationship with who uh, was newly trained as a neo tantra teacher, and he wanted to practice mm-hmm. a lot on me. Mm-hmm. Lucky you! Yeah, yeah, I'll be I will be yeah. this practitioner. Well, you're, I mean, obviously, you enabled the practitioner to practice, right? And you were like, okay, but you didn't know what you were getting into, or did you? Well, at the time, he said he would make me. You know, every Tuesday night we had to sit down and do breath work. I'm like, you know, just tell me when we're having sex or when I need to <laughs> breathe or whatever. And um, I was always nervous about making too much noise because mm. Neo Tantra is about breath, sound, and movement. And a lot of people are used to being quite 
quiet. You worried about the neighbors or the kids, Mm -hmm. right? And he said to me, inspire the neighbors. Mm. And I love that. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Yeah. I like that. Well, it can be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what an invitation to receive, especially if you're so used to being quiet, to like, you know, unleash that. Like, let the world hear you. Well, the thing is, if you have children, though, in the house, yeah. Probably, I mean, you could inspire them in certain well, ways. Well, you don't but, want to traumatize the right, children. Right, but we don't want to traumatize them. But you, yeah, you get a, have a getaway somewhere in the woods where you're allowed to, like, unleash. Yeah. Uh, and, at any rate, not everyone that's not available to everyone. But do continue. <laughs> but I have a little tip for your oh. listeners. Oh. I really don't like it if somebody puts a pillow over my face to mm. try and dull the sound. I feel like I'm being silenced. But if you take one of those eye pillows, that's really small, so it just covers the mouth. Ah, you know, it like just muffles it a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's yeah. Good. So then you can still... Or you, you know yeah. what it reminds me of? You know when you're using the magic wand and it's so loud, but you just, all you just do is put a comforter over and you're like, well, that changed everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Although sometimes that blocks some of the, the sensation of the vibration, yeah. so I just go for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. The neighbors think that I have a very loud blow dryer on all the time. <laughs> your neighbors are right. your, your your man's yeah. family. Well, I live above a coffee shop, though, oh. and sometimes I feel like they can hear it vi- like vibrating the floor. Because <laughs> I sit on the oh floor a lot. Anyway, enough about me. Yeah. Yeah. No, back it's to, great. Back to you, yeah. please, Caroline. I'm yeah. really enjoying our yeah. threesome. What yeah, a great way to start the morning. We know how to have fun. <laughs> we do. It is. So, yeah, it's part of why I actually teach Neo Tantra with a very juicy edge, because that's how I got into it, was through having really amazing sex. Um, And in the West, which is mostly um, where Neo Tantra is practiced, there is this focus on sacred sexuality. So... Um, I'm delineating between, so I'm using the word Neo Tantra versus just Tantra because in India there's classical Tantra, mm. both in Hinduism and Buddhism, and that's quite different. There's, it has very little to do with sex. It's much more about mantras and deities, and I actually practice that as well, but I'm not qualified to teach it. Mm-hmm. So um, as a way to honor the source mm-hmm. uh, culture, I like to just make people aware that it's this Western form Mm -hmm. that I'm teaching. And after my first trip to India, I know you, you, yeah, I went to India. India. To, to yeah, she, she's been there too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where were you in India? I was all over from the north, like Delhi to Agra, Varanasi oh. to Goa. I was in Mumbai, uh, and then I was over the other side in Cal- Calcutta. Calcutta, yeah. for just a little bit. That was kind of different. It's intense. It's I was intense. just in Kolkata. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in Dharamsala as well. I was all over. I oh. want to go back. Oh, love it! I'm taking people in November. Ooh, oh, there you November go. 2020. It's like a tantra, like a yes. tantra tour, uh, okay. or what is this? Well, it's really because I'm really passionate about um, helping people understand the difference. Because I think there's a lot of misconception mm-hmm. about what tantra even is, and then what neo tantra is. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to take people back to India so that they can experience what it's like to sit with some of these classical tantric teachers that I've had the pleasure of sitting with and then understanding the difference. Oh yeah. So taking people to my favorite temples and teaching them about bhakti yoga, which is another, Mm -hmm. it's the yoga of love and devotion that I'm into. So what is the difference? What is Neo Tantra? (laughs) I love it. You You nailed it, Amy. You nailed it. Well, one of the definitions, I'm really geeky about Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the definitions of the word tantra is to stretch mm. or to expand. And I'm, the audience can't see all yeah, the hand gestures I'm doing. She's but stretching and expanding. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um, some people say it's like expanding as if a loom was pulling. But it's really about expanding our awareness and expanding our consciousness. Mm-hmm. And that can certainly happen in Neo Tantra. But the focus is a lot on me- a dynamic meditation. So focusing on... Um, say, conscious touch or focusing on the pleasure that one gets Mm -hmm. from using touch as a meditation Mm -hmm. or using, for example, breath work or sound. And when I came back from Varanasi, actually, I was like, wow, maybe I'm doing this all wrong because I talk a lot about I can teach people how to quadruple their orgasms, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, that's actually mostly through breath and sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is mind blowing, I think, because so often we're thinking we have to know these amazing techniques mm-hmm. and we can actually take charge of our own pleasure. So I was like, maybe I'm doing it all wrong because I focus on sex. But in the West, 
it's actually very interesting not being American because when you watch American TV, which I did growing up, you think everybody's like totally sex obsessed. And then having lived in California for 15 years, I find it's quite repressed in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. People get their, their ideas, you're right, about what sex looks like from, from entertainment, from the TV. And then you realize that no, that people are a little in, into little boxes and they're terrified of sex. Right. Right? So to give people um, empowerment, that's a lot of what I do. Because if we can give ourselves permission to be loud in the bedroom mm -hmm. or to ask our partner for what we want, that can be even really edgy. Mm -hmm. I notice it can actually be quite hard. A lot of my private students have no idea to even tell me what it is they want. Mm -hmm. But as we explore and they try, you know, I can offer them this technique or that technique, and then they can pleasure map on the body and then be able to communicate that. Mm -hmm. Because I think good sex is a lot about communication. So I stopped apologizing for teaching people how to have better orgasms. Mm -hmm. And what I notice is if... Um, you know, that's, that meets the need that I actually see in society and that gets them in the room. And then we also chant mm -hmm. mantras and then, then they're motivated to do the breath work. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't say yes Yeah, yeah. yeah. to breathing if it can better their orgasm? Right. Mm -hmm. We just did a whole, we just answered a sex question in the previous podcast we recorded about taking away some of the senses like sight as not being something that is, well, this person that asked the question was, was visually impaired. And so we talked about the other sensations that could be activated and Tantra mm -hmm. came up yeah, as sort of a practice because people always think they have to deep, deeply eye gaze yeah. at each other. So there's one way to do it. Yeah. 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 You just all stare at each other the whole time. So and, that's great. Yeah. This, the touch activation mm -hmm. is so key. Yes. Well, there are many ways to activate and it's a lot about, I'm going to get a little woo, but mm -hmm. it yeah. is about moving energy and, and that can be life force energy or they'd call it Kundalini Shakti and mm -hmm in India, but it's really connecting to that primal part of self and learning to harness that energy. And obviously it's delicious when you're doing that with a lover, but there are practices where you can learn how to have full body orgasms even on your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have single people listening in, oh, yeah. people often ask me that. They're like, do I have to have a partner? Do I have to be in a committed relationship? And while well, that's lovely, mm -hmm. if you don't have that to have agency in your own body, um, and to not always have to have somebody else. Yeah, and, and then that's where I think is it's much easier. Well, not, easier is not maybe not the word, but maybe less complicated to learn on your own than with someone else too. What, you, what it is what your body likes or how to do you know certain forms of breath and um, and you can learn with other people. I know for me when it's like my home practice where I'm like oh there it is. I don't have to think about someone else and meeting them or syncing up with them. Um, so whether I think whether someone is single or partnered, it could be helpful to have their own practice probably. Right, because mm -hmm. as we understand our own bodies, then we're able to communicate mm -hmm. yeah. with it's, somebody else. For someone that is new, they're listening, and they have never, ever practiced any sort of tantra with their partner or by themselves. What? Because a lot of people think of this wooey thing, as you mentioned, right? They're like, it's too chakra-based for me. I don't know anything about that. I'm from Wisconsin, and I'm scared of chakras. I don't even know where that is. Could, do you have any suggestions for those folks that want to mm. like maybe just do one peace to, tr to attempt this tantric uh, way of life almost. Yes. So if we think of, I'm going to try and answer in a non-woo way, okay. even though I'm pretty esoteric, yeah. Yeah. but um, a lot of people want practical tools. So um, even just breathing more deeply and giving ourselves permission to sound, Margot Anand is one of the leading um, teachers in the world uh, of Neo Tantra. And she literally says, people always think opening your mouth, they don't really realize how wide. You want to open three fingers wide. Ah. And oh. de depending, that's pretty wide. That's like oh, deep God. throating, right? right? I just did four. <laughs> I was like, damn. I can barely fit three. Uh, I got a small mouth. I got her four. Well, what happens is when we open the mouth. <laughs> Amy's got her whole fist. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I got that in it. <laughs> this is such a good way to start the week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but but even when we release the jaw like that, it helps release the pelvic floor, oh. mm -hmm. right? And when we release the jaw, it relaxes the pelvic floor. And often, for example, if people are having painful sex, mm. there could be lots of reasons for that. But it's often because they're tight and jammed up. Mm -hmm. So just by um, exhaling with some sound 
and opening the mouth. If you want to be extra daring, you could even stick your tongue out. Mm. <sighs> mm-hmm. It's like that lion's breath in yoga. We're like, <sighs> is that what that one is? Lion's breath. Lion's breath. Yes, lion's yeah. breath. Yeah, yeah. I never do it. Yeah. That's good, yeah. But that so that I've helps that helps to relax because that's because of the vagus nerve exactly. system, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it activates the vagus nerve, mm-hmm. which is one of the biggest nerves in the body. And then I'm talking trauma language, mm-hmm. but yeah. it down regulates or calms and relaxes the body. So most people get used to when they have pleasure tensing up, mm-hmm. right? And you tense as you get closer to the orgasm. But if you can allow the body to relax when the waves of pleasure come. If you think, I can't draw for the audience, but you draw for the two ladies. <laughs> yeah. As the wave of pleasure is coming, if you tense the body, it's actually going to hit a wall. Mm-hmm. But if you relax the body and breathe and sound, then that wave keeps going and you actually amplify mm-hmm. your pleasure. Is it also what, a lot of times, at least in my experience personally, when you're reaching that orgasmic state, especially with a penis owning partner, you tend to like want to go faster, faster, faster. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming it would be maybe... Uh, great to not only sort of relax, but also maybe slow down at that time and really feel in. Is that something that you suggest as well? Yes. Okay. So I'm always like, yeah, faster, harder. I told you before we started recording, like I'm <laughs> fast and hard, but maybe it would be good for me to slow, slow it down. Let's go slower well, than slow and slower than that. Damn it. But then I'm like, come on, come on. But I like t- the tapping in the embodied, the embodiment. It does kind yes. of, you feel more deeply into like the, the movement and with your partner. Yes. Well, nothing wrong with hard and fast. That's <laughs> yeah, like really good you. sometimes. <laughs> but I mean, I think the best sex is actually a whole range of different things. Mm-hmm. And especially if you've been with a partner for a long time, it's really nice to be able to pace things and breathe together and take, um, when I'm teaching as a Taoist and neo-tantric technique about ejaculation control, Um, where you can actually learn as a person with a penis to have as many orgasms as you like. But if you ejaculate, you know, unless you're 18 to 21, in general, there's a refractory period. And for some people, that could be till the next day. Hours, yeah. Right? Right. And then it's all over, and that can leave partners quite dissatisfied. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is made possible by OMGS.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made tasteful and inspiring short videos to show you techniques on how to pleasure yourself or another vulva. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and has changed their lives. So for all you vulva owners or vulva lovers out there who may already be having good orgasms and you want to take it to the next level, or perhaps you want to explore more variety in your playtime, OMGS will have something just for you. With two seasons, one all about internal and the other all about external techniques, it's better than any book or DVD money can buy. To learn more, visit omgs.com backslash shameless. Our listeners get $5 off. Check it out. This podcast was also made possible by Uber Lube. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant great for all kinds of sex. It's less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes. And there are hundreds of doctors who recommend Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks who are experiencing dryness. You never knew lube could be this good. So whether you're an avid lube lover or you've never used lube before, Uber Lube is right for you. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on the body. Uber Lube has endless uses. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth right before an oral sex session, and it totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's gorgeous. It's totally discreet and looks more like a beautiful cosmetic product, so you can even leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX and you get 10% off and free shipping. That's uberlube.com. Go check it out. And now back to the show. Learning to be in sync with your partner and take the arousal up, and then take it down and up and down. So you're modulating. Um, that allows for longer pleasure for, I was about to say both people. It depends if it's just two yeah, or more in the room. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. And then you can actually play for longer. Mm-hmm. So biology 
the biology says, get it up, get it in, get, you know, Morning, done. get it out. Yeah. And then you're done. But we can, you know, unless you're trying to make a baby, <laughs> you can, um, we're not just having sex for procreation anymore. Yeah. We get to have sex for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I know when I'm with my lovers, I don't want to put my makeup on for five minutes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to play for like five hours. Oh, yeah. yeah, And then lose your voice. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. Yes, and then come with an extra sultry voice. I like it. But uh, yeah, it can also, especially with couples, it can be much more satisfying as well if you can have agency, especially for the penis owner around... Um, when you're going to ejaculate, because it can be very, very frustrating mm -hmm. if your partner rolls over and go to, goes to sleep, yeah. which is normal biology. Mm -hmm. So this, um, the techniques that we teach are really about allowing you to harness that energy so you can have more choice around it, mm -hmm. which includes mm -hmm. harder, faster, deeper, longer with mm -hmm. great stamina or slowing down. And the number one thing when I teach classes um, on awakening the G-spot in female ejaculation. The number one thing that most, um, that most people with pussies will use, lovely inclusive queer oh, language yeah. here, oh, yeah. um, is that they just want their partner to slow down. Yeah, I hear that so often. Right. And they're afraid to ask, or they have asked. That's why we say go slower than so and slower than that, because yes. people request going slower, and the people's idea of what slow is is still not very slow. <laughs> And yes. so they're like, I have to ask my partner this all the time. I'm like, hey, slow, 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 slow. And then like down. slower than that. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Like five. You notches. could do it in a nice way. I do yeah, it in totally. a nice way. I'm like, oh, let's go a little bit slower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it has, it's just like the natural flow of things. You yeah. just want to go like yeah. fast and hard, which but I like, dig. For but. pussy owners, you're, I mean, too, I, I a lot, and I think for a lot of folks, even for penis owners who haven't experienced that slowness, oftentimes when they do, they're like, whoa, I feel more. There's more right. sensation there that it wasn't there. Because when you're moving, fast and hard serves a time and place. But when you're moving that fast, you were missing some of the sensation. It's, it's impossible to feel all of it when you're moving that fast. But when yes. you go really slow, you're like, oh, I, there's this like subtle tingling over on my, you know, the left side of my, <laughs> my pussy. Or, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I can feel that, that as you're describing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I love, I love that you're commenting on that. And for our listeners, you know, that you, who are listening to this, you're hearing that, yeah, it applies to something that is um, a little more wooey or thought of. And this is for everyday folks, you know. Exactly. You don't have to be a tantra person to take tools out of this or to want to slow things down or to feel more. You know, that's not necessarily, I mean, if, if, you're, if that's not your jam. This isn't even for cisgender yeah. folks. This is for All anybody. Folks. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody right. out yeah. there listening. This is about, yeah, presence, more orgasms, more pleasure, more connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. And deeper intimacy. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching, often... In the beginning, I invite people, actually, we take the genitals off the table and we learn about, I mean, the, f the rest of the canvas of the body. Mm -hmm. There's so many wonderful erogenous zones. And so often, we just kind of, especially if you've been in a connection with somebody for a while, mm -hmm. you're in your rut and you kind of know what makes them work. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's really fun to slow down mm -hmm. and explore. Yeah. And a, a tip for the listeners as well as you were saying, like, you know, slower than slow, what is slow? Um, a way to really show the kind of touch, like either the, the lightness or the firmness, you know, some people, I like it rough sometimes mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but if you actually demonstrate that on your partner's arm, they can get a felt sense experience of what slow feels like mm -hmm. or what soft feels like. Because soft or slow is relative for everybody. Mm -hmm. So to give them that sensory experience can be a, a really great thing. I love that, yeah. I do too. Yeah. And I think but, yeah. also the way, often I'll have, with heterosexual couples, I'll have uh, women in my private practice complaining about their partners. He doesn't listen to me. And then I hear them shutting them down and mm -hmm. being so critical. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to inspire anybody to want to make a shift. So one of the formulas that I use is, um, you know, saying thank you, appreciating them for something they're doing. And if it's really bad, you can just be like, thank you for touching me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's always something to appreciate. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And then I'd love it if you. Mm -hmm. So that creates this beautiful invitation. And it's not about making them wrong. Mm -hmm. It's about inviting them. Most partners want to know yeah. what's pleasing you mm -hmm. 
And right? it can be a scary conversation. A lot of people don't uh, want to feel like they're ever, you know, maybe not very good at something. And but uh, but like that, you know, that formula. And we use that formula too. There's a there's a way to lovingly express, and I think appreciation is a part, of, a big part of it too. Is like you know, here's here's what was really beautiful and what really worked, and I'm just like so happy to be connected with you, and I just love your hands and my body. And here's this other piece that I would love to explore more with you, or maybe receive a little more, give a little more of. And and I think that everyone probably has plenty of those moments where, like, we're we are not born knowing everything at all, of course. Right. Just, well, nobody actually teaches us. Mm-hmm. I mean, things are changing thanks mm-hmm. to yes, podcasts this, like yeah, yours, yeah, yeah. right? So, but most of us were not taught how to have. Sex. Mm -hmm. And um, for any of the people that are mothers that are your listeners, I remember when I was um, learning to breastfeed my son, I had to hire a lactation consultant. Mm -hmm. And again, you'd think it's the most natural thing. He should just hop on the boob and latch on. Right. And that does happen for some people and many people need help. Mm -hmm. So that's part of why. You have a great podcast like yours and and why hiring somebody who can really support you, Mm -hmm. it can actually be easier. I often say to my my private students, like, you can blame me. You can say, Caroline said we have to practice this thing Mm -hmm. and it can be easier (laughs) routing it that way versus... Yeah, then like, honey, yeah. we need to do this thing. Yeah, you know. we're broken. There's something wrong. Is this yeah. like what they would go to? So you, when you work with people, then so because um, you're, you're, I think that's a good segue into um, to talking about how people can find the right person to work with. So you work with people. You work with people in, in person. You work with individuals, couples. Do you do online stuff as well? Yeah, I mean, I uh, a lot of my free offerings are really online because mm-hmm. I like to. I'm as you said. I'm very passionate about yes. this work. Yeah. It was truly life-changing for me. Uh-huh. And I never planned to get into this. Even when I went to study to become a teacher, I just did it for my own personal development. Mm-hmm. And then I was just seeing the shifts in other people, especially when I was uh, practicing hands-on sessions. So mm-hmm. um, it was because of that that it all kind of evolved. Um, but, yeah, so I, w- I, I actually don't do many classes online mm-hmm. because – while we've been focusing a lot on the sexuality parts, a lot of it is about energy as well. And to really understand the energetics, you've got to, now I'm getting woo again, (laughs) but you've got to sit in the field and you've got to have a felt sense experience of what that is. Mm -hmm. And if people are already sensitive to energy, I can do that online with them. But Many of the people that come and study with me in the beginning have never done this before. Yeah. So it's just like going to do a Hatha yoga class. You need a teacher who's going to give you adjustments mm-hmm. and help help you course correct, right? Mm-hmm. I do product trainings all the time for, for sex toys, and it's so much more effective in person. And right. that's not even a practice that's as energy involved. So I can't imagine. It's preferred. I, I would prefer to meet a teacher in person as well and to really then you can tap into all sorts of different levels of of where you're trying to go so in person is always better i think so that's part of why i wanted to come in person with you you lovely ladies today that's why we love in-person podcasts so much too feel the energy there makes makes a really big difference yes you have to feel the energy of amy's new animal yeah (laughs) now he's all calm look at him he's he's like okay it feels connected and i can relax now skrillex skrillex (laughs) Talk. Oh my God! Well, that's a, we'll explain that story on the podcast another time. Um, so, but so okay. So that you do. So that's uh, the online is more for people to get and uh, kind of take some little um, get like little bits of info and exactly. then. Exactly. But the actual work is more in you are in person with people. in person. Yeah, and there are a lot of ways people can engage. I mean, I as I've mentioned, I love getting my hands on people's mm-hmm. bodies, mm. and I can take people in in private sessions into very advanced practices like sexual healing. And Mm -hmm. I work with a lot of trauma survivors, for example. Um, And that's a very delicate and vulnerable place to hold for people. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't do that in a group context. I would do that one-on-one. But I, I, you know, not everybody needs that. Sometimes they just want to come and learn some fun, sexy tools to share with their partners. Mm -hmm. And... um, at pure pleasure, yes. I, I got yes. to share. Yep. Uh, I got to workshops. share one of my neo tantric rituals, and what I love about those is you don't have to know anything. Mm-hmm. So you get five to twenty minute guided exercises, and I often say to people, if you just take what I taught you tonight and go home and practice that, mm-hmm. it will revolutionize your sex life because mm-hmm. I'm teaching these new pathways 
of intimacy and connection. Mm. Um, I actually, a few years ago, changed my whole business model once I started running retreats. Mm, mm. Because three hours, which is how long the rituals are, is wonderful, but three days yes, is yeah. even better. Yeah. Right. Deep dive. And um, yeah, Thursday I'm driving down to Joshua Tree to lead a retreat. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Which I'm very excited. Yeah. I love Joshua Tree. I mean, that's the thing with like embodied practices is like, you got to get in there. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, so listening to podcasts is great. Please don't stop listening to our podcasts. But, you know, it is a heady process. It really is. Right. The practices, and I get that. I can listen to something in a podcast and be like, okay, I kind of understand the, the practice. And you gave some great, very simple tools here that people can incorporate. But, you know, to really get something done, we kind of need to live it for a little while. Yes. So one of the definitions for me of Neo Tantra is getting out of our head and into our bodies. Mm. And, you know, we're in the Bay Area and close to Silicon Valley. And so, you know, in the West, we glorify being in the mind. Mm. But uh, that actually can keep us quite disconnected from our bodies. Mm. Um, And, for example, I work with um, penis owners who struggle, for example, with uh, premature ejaculation. And, you know, there are sex therapists that just do talk therapy about that. And I certainly think that has some value. But the level of success somebody can feel if they have a felt sense experience of being able to slow down in practice, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with somebody who really knows how to support them. That's another whole level of embodied healing Mm -hmm. and and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I just, yeah, there's a teacher called Krishna Das, and he he says we can't think ourselves out of the prison mm. that we've created in our own minds, mm. Mm. and it's very true. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's good. That's I, that's mind opening mm-hmm. language right there. Well, saying when we like, it's so hard for us to see ourselves. Like we're try, so hard. I can speak for myself. I won't speak for the world, but I, it's hard for me to just see. Like, oh, here's where I'm in my own way, and I'm going to unstuck myself. You know, by doing these things. And so to ha- work with people that one can serve as mirrors to help me see where I might be in my own way. Two to also give me some push and encouragement. Three to help me to feel safe and to. Um, yeah, just to, to give me that, which I don't already have inside of me or that I do, but I'm like really blocked from or unaware mm-hmm. of. So yeah, we are such big advocates for working with people, whether it's, you know, therapists or also, but in embodied practices, like, you know, like Tantra and et cetera, there's, there's so many wonderful, um, humans out there such as yourself doing this work and um you know not all are uh, created equal um in that sense in terms of the trainings which brings me to what you're doing that you're also offering trainings for folks who want to work and enter into the tantra world to bring that into their their practice right because there's a lot of folks who just have an experience a tantric experience i'm a tantric teacher now you know and you're like ooh, you could create a lot of trauma a lot of consent issues that is happening right mm-hmm. yes it's happening and you know i think uh, the Me Too movement has really helped us see it's happening across the board from, mm-hmm. you know, gymnastics to Hollywood. Yes. So it's not just in Neo Tantra. And I actually think it's a powerful thing that these issues are getting brought to the fore. Mm-hmm. But when we're exploring the very edgy practices around our sexuality, like I actually only learned this once I was doing this work. For me, sexuality is a playground. But for many people, it is like the deepest part of their mm-hmm. shadow. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when you're diving that deeply, it's very important Mm -hmm. that the person is creating safety, that they have integrity. Um, And maybe we can offer your listeners a link. I actually wrote Mm -hmm. a blog many years ago, just how to find a teacher that you can trust. And while it focuses on Neo Tantra teachers, Mm -hmm. you know, it can really be applied to any kind of person in a, a position of authority so yeah, we, yeah, we would love that, that. we would love available. that link yeah i think someone else offered that for something else too but i the more more is better in that, that sense was the, um well, Dr. She, the, yeah. chris christina that oh yeah from she was it, in was bali this, yeah yes. similar thing how to find yeah how, to find the right practitioner for you yeah i think and i think that's really important like you're saying when it comes to sexuality i mean <laughs> that's like make sure it feels really safe and aligned and and definitely do your research um, right so I, i'm really happy to hear I mean, i'd love to hear more about your training that you're offering like i'm happy to hear that you're offering something like that because i believe you know i've known you for a number of years and so i know that you're doing only really good wonderful work that is really um you know safe and respectful and very 
very well informed and sex positive and you know modern day accurate information. Um, so I'm happy to hear that you're doing that. And so can you tell us more about what that uh, offering is? Yeah. So I started. I was like, who am I to start my own neo tantra school? Mm. But I was seeing people being really out of integrity, and I was like, well. And I actually did a whole year worth of advocacy mm -hmm. um, around this. But I was like, if I train my own teachers, I then I can hold them accountable, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. they're my students. And so that was how um, Sarasa Tantra, that's the name of the school, was birthed. And I love, I'm going to get geeky about Sanskrit mm -hmm. for a moment. The word Sarasa means juicy. Mm -hmm. Potent and full of love. Oh, that is a wow, all in word. one word. Yeah, damn. Wow. Sa is sa that's sa sarasa, sarasa, yeah. Sarasa, 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 sarasa. 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 That's yes. the name of your school. I love yes. that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, and and um, I've been training teachers just for the last few years, and the groups are um, quite intimate. You know, often you'll go to a teacher training, and they're like. 40, 50, 60 people in the room. Mm. I keep it quite quite small. We have 15 to 20 people maximum. Mm -hmm. If you get lucky, you might even, last year we had a smaller training. Mm -hmm. um, and I do it in my, uh, in my beautiful space that's all dialed in in the Oakland Hills. Mm -hmm. I do it as a non-residential program to make it super accessible and affordable for people. Nice. Mm -hmm. And while it certainly is for people that want to learn to teach this um, and do it in a way where they're not only keeping their participants safe, mm -hmm but also keeping themselves safe mm, mm -hmm. because the minute you stand up in a, in any kind of public role, you know, people's projections on you. So how to practice good energetic hygiene, for example, and not mm. be carrying around other people's trauma all the time mm. in, in, yeah, in your energy body. That's important. Energetic hygiene. I've never heard of that. I feel yeah, like, like that, I yeah. do take on that. I want to learn. Right. A lot of people do. Yeah. Someone told me to put oil like on the back of my uh, cerebral cortex, if you will, to like, is that something that you suggest? I know. Sorry. I, I just want to know. No, about that's this great. Okay. I haven't heard the oil. It was thing. A, it my, my, uh, the oil. she was a Vedic astrologer. And oh, I would trust that. Then. Yes. She said <laughs> uh, that astrology. that was an area where I have to really be careful and that uh, because, and I do, I, I feel like I get attached. Sometimes energy attaches to me. And if this is too wooey for you listening out there, <laughs> it's true though, because <laughs> I feel it sometimes. So, well, any of the listeners, whether you interview or not, you might have a person in your life that feels super needy or super mm -hmm. clingy or like, mm -hmm. even with lovers, sometimes they can, you can like feel them even when you're no longer in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I teach, even at my, um, you know, neo-tantric rituals is a way to energetically disconnect from the people that you've done all this weaving with in the room that night mm -hmm. well i think so everyone can probably important. relate to that feeling of like well i you know someone had some heavy stuff going on and i like can't shake it like who has never experienced that like I mean, maybe some people who have a hard time emotionally connect people like you know i don't know maybe someone with autism or something so i don't want to say right. that no well, one maybe can. people didn't know what it was yeah. they were feeling something but, but that didn't feeling of it. like yeah the other ah uh, there's like something here and it's kind of stuck and yes. i don't really and it's hard to be present and connected when that happens like it's it's energy that needs to move mm -hmm. well even if like even if you had an argument with your partner say or with your kid or whatever, but that energy can stay in the room. So a simple thing you can do without having to uh, have much skill is to just burn sage, mm -hmm. right? Literally just clear out the space. And I'm actually, I don't really like the smell of sage mm -hmm. all that much, but it makes sure it gets rid of things. So mm -hmm. I just, yeah, even opening Smudge. the window or, mm -hmm. Or opening the doors to just let the breeze blow through mm -hmm. will help shift any of those stuck oh, emotions because yeah. emotion is energy in motion. Mm -hmm. it's, that's, yeah, mm -hmm. is it really? No, yeah. I, I, okay. I, I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to make it relatable because yeah. obviously I talk totally. about energy all the yeah. time, but we forget. And the, the, some of your listeners, I imagine, I'm thinking of the penis owners right now, mm -hmm. but we'll relate to this. Like if somebody's had a, a really big orgasm, say, and especially if you've done any. Uh, G-spot work. In Neo Tantra, we think of the G-spot as the access point to the second chakra. Chakras are energy centers in the body. But that's often a place where a lot of emotion is held. So mm -hmm. somebody can have an amazing orgasm. They've just had a great time with you. Mm -hmm. And then they burst into tears. And yeah. like some memory comes up from their childhood. And often what I say to my private students, especially when I'm working with couples, is uh, you know, let me do the heavy lifting. Let me do the processing mm -hmm. <laughs> with your partner so you guys can be having the fun yeah. 
the fun mm. of it all. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so in the training that you're Sorry. doing. Sorry, yes, I'm, I'm so enjoying that chat. I'm no, like, I like getting it. distracted. This, this is the point of all this. We like to go, there's like a little juicy tidbit. But so what can people expect there? Are they, and like, is it, uh, is it like just a deep dive into doing all these practices and are they like touching each other's bodies and you're teaching consent, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but what can someone expect to actually go and attend one of these trainings? Yeah, so um, it's, I'm a very kinesthetic learner, so I, and I like to teach in a very embodied way. So literally you're going to get to practice not only learning the techniques, mm. but also teaching. Mm, mm-hmm. you, yeah, teaching to the, the, the people in the room. And we all know this. If you're able to teach something, you understand it at a totally different level. Totally. So, I just, there's, there's a saying, someone who said, who said this? I forgot who said this, but it was that the three steps to really getting something down is you learn it, practice it, and then you teach it. And like, and a lot of people miss the teaching part. They learn, they practice, they kind of get it, but it's that teaching piece that it really locks in and like sticks with you. Well, that's when you realize where the gaps are Mm -hmm. in your knowledge, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I also, I have a beautiful Indian lady, uh, Palki Mawar coming up. She's one of my graduates and she's going to come and teach uh, a little bit about the deities so mm-hmm. that we can start learning the difference between classical Tantra and Neo. Because mm-hmm. uh, for me, it's very important that, you know, that there is this delineation. Um, and I'm going to be teaching things like conscious touch. I'm mm-hmm. going to be teaching a practice uh, from Sky Dancing Tantra from Margot Anand's work called streaming, where you can learn to have full body orgasms. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach how to create rituals, which could be for groups or could be just for individuals. Mm -hmm. And then you get to practice with your peers um, and they give you feedback and I give feedback. So it's like everybody's supporting each other's learning. Mm -hmm. Um, And we break it up into two five day uh, modules so that you've actually got some time to integrate Mm -hmm. uh, a month apart. Um, and to really embody the skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it can certainly help you to be a better lover, learn to... So this is another important thing. In Neo Tantra, a lot of it's about like raising the energy and being really ecstatic. And that's wonderful. But if we don't actually know how to ground and mm-hmm. how to be anchored, then you're not tethered to anything. So how do you come back to earth after this mind-blowing spine-tingling orgasm mm. and if you if you are going to teach you you really do need to know how to do that mm. because often you're engaging a practice and you have to be able to hold the room yeah so learning how to be present with ourselves um and that's another thing even in love is space most people just want us to want to be present with mm. their partners mm. it's not always as much about the perfect technique or the are you really there with me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to practice all those skills in the training. Mm. I love that. You just said so many things. You just said, I was like, "Uh, I want that. I want that. (laughs) Or like, I'm sure listeners like multiple orgasms, full body orgasms. Are you there with me? Like, oh yeah. How do, so how do people learn more about all of your offerings? How do they sign up for these things? How do they learn more about these things? How do they work with you? That's great. Well, I feel like I make myself very available to people in the world. (laughs) Yeah. The world needs it. But thank you. (laughs) Um, but they can go to my website and we'll put all the links, yes. but carolinecarrington.com uh, and sign up for my mailing list is really the best way to kind of get started. And I send free tips and tools and videos mm-hmm. as well as discounted tickets to Ooh. my events. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, and um, pl- feel free to follow me on Facebook. I mean, I, I think I can say this. Yeah. I feel like I'm quite the Facebook whore because oh, I just yeah. love. Yeah. You could say that all day. <laughs> There'll be all kinds of free nuggets on there too. Oh, yeah. Caroline Carrington on, on Facebook and your, yeah, on your website and, and when's your next newsletter? workshop or, uh, well, the very retreat? next one is going to be in Joshua tree. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure when your listeners will get this. Um, and then I'm going to be taking people up to the Avenue of the Giants in Humboldt. Oh, Ooh, that's yes. so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Mm. Yes. It's special up there. It's mm. really special. There's elk sometimes. Mm. I used to live up there, did two semesters. and oh, it, did. Yeah, two semesters at Humboldt State, and it was Oof. so cool. I, I mean, like Jurassic Park. You feel yes. like you're really in this this old, beautiful area that's untouched. Right. Well, so. thousand-year-old redwood yeah. trees. And we're going to do – that's – it's kind of the evolution of where my practice is going because it's mm. going to be, we're going to do more mm. chanting mantra and, and more than sexy time out in the trees, but really getting 
to connect with the potency of the land in mm. California. Yeah. Um, and that's half sold out already and oh. it's happening in July. My things sell out yeah. pretty quickly. But you're in high fun. demand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I've seen, I've seen, I've watched you over the years. It's been really wonderful to watch. I mean, I just going to the workshops I used to teach at pure pleasure. They're always so mm. profound to watch what people would leave there with. And, um, yeah, it's really awesome to just see you continuing to expand and now to be teaching people more how to, how to teach and just to, yeah, that's so, um, seems like I'm not surprised that that's a natural step of what you're doing and you're the perfect person to be doing that. So thank you so much. I'm glad you're not on the trading floor anymore. Yeah. Yes. I'm very, I mean, we were talking about this just in terms of some hiccups you were having behind the scenes as entrepreneurs, like we have to know how to run a business too. So I'm very grateful for that time in private equity Mm -hmm. and I, I'm very grateful to be doing Mm -hmm. what I absolutely love. Yeah, well, it's thank you calling. for sharing yeah. a little bit of your work with our listeners mm-hmm. and with us. Really mm-hmm. appreciate it. You have beautiful energy. Mm-hmm. And now we've got you talking about energy yes. too. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love energy. I she really does. do. She was the other day. She's like, Amy, today is the day to cleanse your crystals. I just cleanse all my yeah, crystals. So I, I was do. like, you did? All right. We are in Santa Cruz yeah. after yeah. all. Come on. I, hey, I do. Yeah. I usually have my jewelry on rocking when I'm going to the gym. You can't wear it. It's yeah. too, it gets in the way of my weights. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's balanced. It's all about balance, yes. right? <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, I love our listeners. Mm-hmm. I hope they took as much from this episode as I did. I love learning about these beautiful practices that exist in the world, and they're very ancient and still brought into this new 2020 way of doing it and applying to your life. So, Caroline Carrington, mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you. And uh, how do you say thank you in uh, Sanskrit? N- yeah. I can say it in Hindi. I What's don't that? No, in, in Sanskrit. Danyavad. Danyavad. Oh. I remember when I was in India, but it's oh. been so long now. Yeah. Over right. Ten years. So Danyavad. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll tempt you to come and join me. Ooh, we have Danyavad. a lot of listeners in India, so if yeah. you're out there in hey, India, India. Danyavad. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Danyavad. Mm. And to all of our listeners that enjoy wine or maybe want to try wine, check out marginswine.com. She is a local winemaker here in Santa Cruz, making small batch boutique wines. You're going to love it as much as Amy and I do. Go to marginswine.com, two releases a year, sign mm-hmm. up for the newsletter. You'll be the first to know. And there are discount coupon codes for those on our website. So check that out. We love you listeners. We love you so, so much. Mm-hmm. We will see you next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.